when a neighborhood grows and people need help, who do they call? They call upon their neighbors to help. That's basically where the volunteer system started, is neighbors helping neighbors. And still to this day, we have neighbors helping neighbors, and we're looking for more neighbors to help, is we need to keep the volunteer system going. You have to have a certain personality to be, to be drawn to EMS. You have somebody who's at the, having the absolute worst day they've ever had, and you come in with this confidence, this professionalism, and you address the problem, you address their needs, and that brings a certain calm to the chaos that's it's overcome them. To even have the basic emergency medical technician training in New York State is 180 hours above and beyond the basic training for being a volunteer firefighter in New York State. Training is very big. The state regulates certain training. TNT class can cost up to $1,000. A paramedic class can cost up to $10,000. There's an initial certification course and textbooks, which can run upwards of $1,500 by the time all is said and done. My biggest concern is that in order to provide EMS, it's deficit spending on our part uh, because we're not having any money coming in designated solely for emergency medical services. Any time that there is uh, a repair that has to be done to the ambulance, that comes out of the firematic budget. Most of our stuff is uh, tax-based and we try not to raise taxes, so we have a budget that is it's the same from year to year. Our ambulances try to get anywhere between 18 months and 24 months, we try to replace them. So you're talking an ambulance of $275,000, $280,000, and the equipment inside of it, it's, if, to put that burden on the taxpayers every couple of years is hard. South Lockport Fire Company is funded primarily off donations and taxes that are placed on the citizens of the town of Lockport. Here in Selden, the fire district is both ambulance and fire department together. So through that fire tax, that's where we get our money from. The only way to supplement keeping the budget the same is you would have to raise that tax. This pandemic has affected our personal protective equipment supply. It's been, been increasingly difficult to come across just the basic necessities like your masks, your gloves, your gowns, your goggles. Because there is such a need, all the supply chains have been really strained. When we deal with almost 3,000 calls in a year, and most of that went for our COVID, our unlimited supply got depleted very quickly. And then when we tried purchasing more of it, we saw that the prices went up. This bill has inherent value in the fact that it's going to allow these companies to maintain or improve their level of care for their community. Nobody wants to take anything away from the commercial ambulance companies. We just want the opportunity to sustain ourselves. The billing would be good because we could sit there and we could come up with a fund or an account where everything that we bill from the patients will go into that account and that account can only be used for EMS, which is again, new ambulance, medical supplies, stuff like that. It's the right thing to do, and that is the, the short answer. We are in the business of protecting our community in whatever capacity that may be. The bulk of our calls for service are emergency medicine, and we have personnel that are ready, willing, and able to answer that call. These commercial agencies that are making the argument that we're basically going to be cutting into their bottom line, quite the inverse is true. Uh, the commercial companies are overextended as it is. A matter of minutes can make all the difference. So by allowing us to bill and maintain our resources and our assets and our training and our EMTs, that's better for the community. I fear with the current trend of deficit spending, not having a designated funding stream for EMS, eventually we're not gonna be able to sustain it. We're not gonna be able to maintain our equipment. We're not gonna be able to maintain our ambulances. Resources as they are are already stretched thin. And I'm concerned that if this bill is not passed, that's only gonna get worse. I'm gonna ask the legislators one more time for help. Help pass this bill, help the volunteer system to stay strong and stay alive. I think a legislator owes it to his or her constituents to provide the best service that they can for the community by ensuring that the community is protected. Mm -hmm.